So, Baruch Hashem, the people of Israel already, you can't run away from Hashem. Egyptians saw in nine plagues that you can't run from God. Nevertheless, they tried to trick God on the tenth one. What did we do? What did they do? They noticed that it's pretty late, but they noticed that in every plague, who got who got punished? The Egyptians. Who were out of the hook? Who were saved? The Jews. The Jews. They figured that it's good to be close to a Jewish person. You close to him. You be friend with him. You be protected. Fine. So what did they do? They asked the Jewish people, what's up with this uh, taking the ship with you? You know, the Jewish people had to take a ship, to drag it, three days prior to the firstborn plant. They say, the ship, this is the gods of the Egyptians. They bow to the ship. They think the ship brings them mazal, good fortune. Can you imagine going to any religion and break their idol before their face? They would kill you, but the people of Israel were loyal to Hashem. He took and dragged this sheep inside the house, tidying them to their bed. And they just could hear the sounds of the sheep from every house. <laughs> what do you do with it? <laughs> and then they see Jewish people coming out the entrance and smearing blood all over the doorpost, top on the sides. <coughs> what is this blood? Where is this come? They kill our God? They're, in one hand, they got very upset. And the other hand, they didn't know what to do. I'm going to kill them. What if they're going to attack me back? They were confused. They never thought that way. They were never afraid of the Jews. And here, they're debating with themselves. On one hand, they want to kill them. On the other hand, they don't want, they're not able to do anything. And they asked the Jewish people, what is this blood? They said, oh, you know, a few days from here, as Moshe already warned you, God's going to kill all the firstborn. The firstborn start a war in Egypt. They demand from Paol, we let the people go, release them. He says, no, I'm not letting them, them and I'm not letting them go. You're not? They start a war. Many died, thousands of them died from the firstborn and feral soldiers because, uh, you know, they try to save themselves. And then they figure, you know, if this is a safe place to be, in the Jewish house, because they're marking the entrance of the houses, so the angel of death will see and skip. We hide in a Jewish house, so many, many thousands, thousands of Egyptians leave their sons or themselves hid in a Jewish house. So because the angel of death is not going to pass here, it's not going to pass by. Hashem. Ask from the Jewish people to put this blood. And Hashem said, I'm going to pass by. When I see the blood, I know it's Jewish there, I'm going to skip. Hashem did sign. Hashem doesn't know he's in the house. What is this for? The blood is not for Hashem. The blood is for the Jew himself to show trust in God. I'm not afraid of the Egyptian. I trust God. He commanded me to put the blood. I put the blood. Nevertheless, it's your God. I trust the God, the only God, <coughs> the Almighty. And Hashem says, I'll see which put the blood, I protect. The angel of death cannot pass by the Jewish neighborhood. Who is the only one who passed by? Hashem himself. Why? To pick up all those Egyptians that hide in the Jewish houses. <laughs> you think you can run away from Hashem? Hashem himself says, I'm going to do the job. But the Pharaoh and his soldiers didn't give up. Why didn't give up? The Jewish people were borrowing product, silver plates and jewelry and dresses from the Egyptians. Why? The booty, the spoil they took after the Egyptian drowned was a hundred times more than what they borrow from their neighbor. So why to bother? 
and bring a special commandments code to the Jewish people and tell them a woman go to a friend and a man to his neighbor and ask from these Egyptians to borrow and why to borrow ask for a gift to so give it to you that was a great trick when you borrow something from someone you have to give it back the Egyptians his heart and mind is still a lost object they have to give it back to me actually they didn't give them as a gift I didn't give up that was the idea so they have passion to pursue after the Jews when they hear the Jews is not coming back hey they took from me so much and clothing and silver and gold and jewelry it's mine she, the woman said to her husband, go, go, go with the soldier. Bring our treasure back. And for the gift, there wouldn't be so much enthusiasm to go after the Jews. It's another trick. So they chase after the Jews on drone. Because Hashem have to pay them. Midah for midah, can I get midah? Measure for measure. For drowning and killing the Jewish people in the Nile. Questions? Next. So they're going around and Yosef, Moshe Rabbeinu is asking the people to get ready, to prepare themselves. And Moshe is busy. Where is Moshe? Moshe is looking for Yosef's coffin. Where is the coffin? In the Nile. Why in the Nile? All the fair, all the pharaohs and the impo most important people, they are in the pyramids, in the safe house. Only Yosef yeah. is in the Nile. Nothing will touch it there. Why? Why did they put it in the Nile? Because the magicians, the Khartoumim of Paro, told Paro, you know, ever since this family came here, we got so much blessing. Especially this Yosef, he was the king here for 80 years. We got so much beracha in this land. The land of Egypt prosper through this time. If he leave, we're going to lose the beracha. We have an idea. When he take his coffin, the wooden one, we put it in the metal one, and we'll make it sunk somewhere in the middle of the Nile, no one can find. And it remain and stay here forever. They did it. The problem was, a year later, 10 years, 20, 50 years later, many people died, people forgot. Imagine yourself 100 years, 210 years, nobody knew where Yosef is. People forgot. It's a new generation. And Yosef is calling in the street, Yosef, Yosef, where are you? He doesn't know where he's buried. All of a sudden, a woman that was still alive from that generation, her name is Sarah Bat Asher. <coughs> she is the daughter of Asher that Yaakov blessed her many years ago, that she lived a long life. She came to know where I know where he is. She took him to the Nile. She pointed to some place in the middle of the Nile. He's right there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing. Moshe Rabbeinu took a piece of cloth. Some say it's a piece of wood. And he carved a road on it. Ale shor. Ale shor. Four words. Shor. Ox. It's the symbol of Yosef. His father blessed him. Mentioning the word shor. He threw it to the water and he says, Yosef, Yosef, if you come, I'll take you. If you don't come, release us from the oath, the promise we gave you, because we can't find you. He threw it to the Nile. Minutes later, bubbles. All over. <clears throat> and this heavy coffin flew, going all the way to Moshe. People lifted. They are ready to leave. There was one guy there that saw what Moshe did and he said, oh, this is such a magic trick. Where is this note? He jumped to the water, he found the note, he took